It is my pleasure to welcome His Excellency, Mr. Santoki, President of Suriname. Your Excellency, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair, leaders of the world. Good morning. We have gathered again to demonstrate that collectively we can achieve and set out a path towards sustainable development. In doing so, we must be realistic, forward-looking, and balanced in our intentions. We must be realistic because by signing the Paris Agreement in 2015, almost the entire world agreed to keep the expected rise in temperature well below two centigrade and preferably below one and a half centigrade. I cannot express my profound disappointment that neither the financial support nor the mitigation measures and the reduction of emissions promised in 2015 have been realized. Countries with low-laying coastal areas like Suriname and the small island developing states are amongst the most vulnerable countries, yet these countries receive no more than 2% of global climate finance between 2016 and 2018. The compassion demonstrated in 2015 seems to be lost and these countries are, not, are in no way responsible for the devastating triggers of climate change, are facing mounting fiscal and debt problems caused by inter alia climate loss and damage. These countries are also facing the financial and social impact of the enduring COVID-19 pandemic. We have to look forward because the future is now. We have no choice than to act now in a cooperative and collective manner. Only by working together we'll be able to face the challenges of climate change. The people and the private sector have embraced the objectives of climate mitigation and adaptation policies. There is widespread support for the transition towards a green economy, let us agree on the mechanisms that will support countries, especially the small island developing states and the country with low-laying low coastal areas like Suriname in making this transition. We must be innovative in our thinking. Our dreams of carbon emission reduction will not just happen because we want it. We will need to continue investing in developing carbon reduction and user products and more cost-effective carbon removal technologies. We must have also a balanced approach because we must recognize the different levels of development in a historical perspective. We see double standards creeping in our thinking whereby those who have already benefited from carbon-driven economies would like to prevent emerging economies to lay similar foundation for the political stability, social development, and economic prosperity. We also must realize that all the good intentions will mean less or nothing if not underpinned by new concessional financing. Existing financial instruments must be refuted regarding their efficiency and effectiveness. Suriname is a carbon negative nation during difficult times and many temptation so far has managed to retain 93% of its forest cover, its wide range of ecosystems and its rich biodiversity. And we remain committed to maintain this commitment as we have demonstrated by endorsing the Glasgow Declaration on Forests and Land Use. We see our commitment as a moral, developmental, and environmental investment for which appropriate compensation means and mechanisms need to be created 
to support sustainable transition in a green economy based on renewable energy sources. Our ambitious NDCs identify four sectors that generate 70% of Suriname's emissions, while at the same time they generate most income for the people of our country. Madam Chair, Suriname being one of the few carbon negative countries in the world has taken bold steps to identify mitigation and adaptation measures to build resilience to counteract this effect of climate change and to reduce emissions while continuing to conserve our biodiversity and strengthening sustainable forest management. We hope that the world recognizes our efforts and support us while we create a new architecture of green development where nature and modern development exist in harmony. Suriname remains committed to the Paris Agreement and with its limited means will continue to protect and preserve and maintain our forests and biodiversity in a positive and balanced manner. Madam Chair, we expect the same commitment for all those gathered here today and those who are not here. Our decisions and commitments must be global, forceful, trustworthy, but above all, realistic and supported by political will and financial means. Leaders, our youth is waiting to see what we decide to create, a secure and sustainable future and what we leave them behind to build on. No doubt, an enormous task, but we owe it to this and next generations and with collective will, we can save the world. Let we express leadership, let we take responsibility, and let we make the difference to save our planet. I thank you for your kind attention. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you, Your Excellency.